No way. Okay. Oh, we made yeah, it out. Luckily, we got the straps to tie down the yaks. <laughs> oh, well, that was eventful. Oh, God, stop. Oh, my God. This is like a saltwater fight right here. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, you guys are gonna have to stay till the very end of this one. There's an unfortunate mishap that happens right at the end. And also, if you guys want to pre-order your Guggen Squad rods, check the pinned comment down in the description and we have that information for you. It's also gonna be at the top of the description, guys. Get your pre-orders in. They're gonna start shipping out in October, if I'm not mistaken, so get ready, man. Here they come. What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Uh, yeah, we found a construction site. Looks to have some water on it. We're gonna do a little fishing tonight. We got the trailer, we got the kayaks just behind me, and or, or behind y'all. <laughs> Devin is actually behind the camera and it's gonna be her first night on the Old Town Autopilot 120, man. It's a sportsman model. She's gonna give that motor a try with spot lock. We got a little breeze. There's a little chop out there on the water, I can see. And uh, I'm gonna be rocking the pedal drive tonight, the 1L6. Torres is on his way. He's probably gonna be pulling up any minute now. He's gonna be joining us this evening. And I've been getting skunked a lot lately, boys. I've been getting skunked, but you know what? Today's the day. We're gonna get on the fish. Devin behind the camera, like I said, is gonna probably put us all to shame and catch all the fish we've been missing out on. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and make the first cast. Yeah, oh, definitely. All right, before I just get to fishing, I'm gonna go ahead and take this time while Weston's loading up the other kayak to mess around with the trolling motor. This is my first time out on it, so I'm kind of digging just uh, going in circles for a second. Ooh, ooh, look, I'm going faster. And I am not steering with the remote. I put the rudder down in the back, and so I'm steering with my uh, feet, the foot pedals. This is a new pond also that we've never fished, so I honestly don't know how uh, deep it is. So far, first impressions, I'm digging it. I think I'm digging it. All right, I just spot locked it for the first time. Yo, guys, this is pretty freaking sweet. I'm not gonna lie. This is like, I feel like cheating. Or this might be honestly nicer than fishing from a boat. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. I spared you guys the unloading and getting the uh, yaks prepped today unlike I've been doing in the last couple videos because I really wanted you guys to get a feel for these kayaks. I feel like now, if you haven't watched the most recent videos, go check them out. We tell you all about the Sportsman 106 PDL and the 120. Devin's out there just chilling. It's her first time on the motor. I think this is going to be so funny <laughs> to see her reactions. I haven't even been on this one in a while. And trust me, I want another one for us with the motor, man. Like, it's, it, it's insane. It's ridiculous how much it takes kayaking and you out of the equation and you can really just focus on the fishing with that motor and spot lock absolutely ridiculous but again this pedal drive system is off the chain and definitely a big step up from most uh, paddle yaks in many situations i mean you can there's many advantages we'll talk to you more about it when we're on the water let's just go ahead and get launched man i'm, I'm pumped for tonight's session on a new body of water we've never hit before so let's just get out there oh, what? I don't know if whatever's on these jeans is good for it, but, well, I say jeans, they're not jeans. I don't know if what I'm putting on it is any better, but we're hitting rock bottom literally. <laughs> Very shallow where we're launching from. All right, let's try and get these things figured out, man. I'm gonna go uh, start things off with the shaky head. I think I'm gonna start, the wind's blowing this way. Maybe hit the windblown bank over here where there's a little bit of overhanging trees. Honestly, fan casting out deep may be one of the better bets with a large worm or a jig. But uh, I'm going to hit the bank for a second and see if some of these shady pockets don't hold some fish. Otherwise, we'll get out there. Also, we just assume there's bass in here. I think I saw two, two logs on fish brain app of uh, bass in this pond, and that was it. It does look like there's bass in here, but we have not verified that yet, so stay tuned. Backlash city when she gone. I don't know what's up with this Metanium DC, but it has gotten a lot worse over time. Like the DC system, I, I don't know. It's literally, it's on four brakes. It's on max braking. It is always getting bird's nests these days. <laughs> Was it worth 500? <laughs> well, to be fair, I bought it on sale. I'm trying to find deals out here, y'all. Oh, thought I just had one swimming with it, guys. And there's some bait right here. This might be the zone. Hold on. This might be where it's at. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's a... Well, they say the big worm is supposed to work in the summertime, and it did. 
worked a little too good. Uh, sorry, bud, I don't know how you got that hook in you, but first catch of the day, don't tell me how, but uh, <laughs> you hit the slim shake. <laughs> See you, dude. Oh, getting bites. Something has it. Something has it. That might be a bass. There we go. First bass of the day. All right. Got him, boys. Yes, sir. First bass, man. That's the type we're known for on the channel. No big Wes. What, what should my nickname be? I mean, like, because I know you guys always would say Flairfish, like for Andrew Flair. But, I mean, I've got to be worth some kind of dink nickname. You guys got to come up with something for me because, you know, this is probably the biggest bass I'll catch all night if we're not lucky. But anyways, y'all, he hit right there in the shade in that little pocket by the rock as well under some of that cover. So I'm taking notes on all this stuff, trying to figure out this pattern. It seems like fishing shallow with the worm is going to attract some fish's attention. So we just gonna keep at that and see what happens. He got this thing all tangled. Funny how you go multiple days getting skunked, having like the worst time on the water and then the freaking bites as soon as it hit the water. He took it to the left, y'all. What is going on in the zone right here? I don't know if that was a bass or a bluegill, but he dipped with it. And look, I got more bites right now. I don't know if this is a bass. He doesn't have it. Nah, nope, he let it go. It's it's a bluegill that time, but the, the fish are congregating right here, man. Wowzers. I mean, as soon as something hits the water, they are ready for it. They're probably waiting on bugs and they're probably waiting on just insects falling down out of that tree to hit the surface and they are keyed in. Wow. Holy smokes. I was trying to say, it's funny how you just go out and get skunked and have hard days on the water and then you come out and you catch two fish in the first half hour. Um, and of course there's days where you do even way better than that, but I mean, come on Wes, pick up the slack. I'm gonna try a little bit to the right, see if that makes any difference. The man has arrived. What's up T? What's up, Had a bite. Something's playing with it. Something may have it. Oh, something. Nope. Bluegill, he was carrying it. He had the tail in his mouth. Yeah, he took it. I was gonna say. He was cruising around with it, but uh, you could tell it was kind of like that munch, munch, munch. Like he probably had a little bit of it and was trying to figure out how to gobble it down. And he had it just right in his mouth whenever I'd set the hook. And so he took it off of there, which means I'm going to throw something else. The worm's been getting hits for me, so why not throw in another worm? I got a drop shot set up right here. Oh, bites. Something's nibbling it. Not a bass. I'm just going to keep... Oh, well, I got him. Dang it. I don't think it's a bass, but it could be, I suppose. It's not fighting. It's not even pulling this drag, and it's on light, so I'm trying to keep him out of the uh, prop here. On the finesse gear. Oh, oh, okay, second wind. <laughs> well, we got a little... <laughs> I'm sure it's, like, just the tiniest fish, guys. <laughs> I'm pretty sure... Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, maybe it's like, a, like, could it be a two pounder? There's no way. There's no way. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yo, 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 yo. It might be like a two pounder. Oh my God. This is like a saltwater fight right here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yo, yo, chill, chill. Oh my gosh. He's got me halfway across the lake, dude. Oh, it's actually a good bass. It could be a three pounder. Oh my god! No way! No way! Guys, six pound line. I have to I have to be very gentle at this time. Oh my no! No! That was like a three pounder! He just flopped off right at the boat. I was about to land him. Dude, that was insane! The coolest fight on this setup ever. Wow! Can I get a rebate, please? And did y'all hear me? I said, that's not a bass. What? <laughs> that was so sick. Oh my gosh. All right, let's do that again. So funny, dudes. <laughs> Reminds me of fishing salt water when the fish just take you. How cool is this little setup, man? <laughs> I think the only thing going for me here is that I don't know if there's a whole lot of trees submerged in structure for them to really take you into. That is where he didn't like break me off much earlier because if you're fishing a lot of the lakes and the ponds that we hit, they're gonna take you into some cover real fast. All right, Torrance says he's got a good one now. How good? Okay. <laughs> he's a pound good. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. 
Maybe. Got him. Got him. Got him. I don't think it's big, but it might fool me again. Second one on the drop shot, guys. Oh, taking a little bit. Taking, taking more. Ah, oh, fuck. They are elusive today, guys. I've caught so many fish on this setup. Like, I, I don't know if I need to... This is a small tack sharp hook. I'm curious, what's the deal? Everything should be fine here. I don't think that one was as big as the last one, but you guys know I thought that last one was small, so... Hmm. It's okay. At this point, I do believe we're gonna actually land a decent fish on this setup right here. Oh, that's a fish right there. Guaranteed, guaranteed bite on this cast. I'm in the zone. Still hasn't hit the bottom yet. Jeez, it's deep. Oh, got a bite. Gotcha. Come on. Not messing around on this one. Let me see you. Let me see you. Easy does it now. All right, he's not that big. No, don't you flop. Don't you flop. I got to keep you down. Dude, these things, I'm telling you. All right, he's about a pound. He's about a pound, maybe a pound and a quarter tops, I think. Get in the boat. Oh yeah, I don't even know if he's a pound. This is a little guy right here. This is a little, this is this is one for the channel. Yeah, I'll land you because you're small so people can make fun of me. Woo! And you almost look like you're barely hooked too. Well, you kind of went past the barb just a little bit. That was, that was barely hooked. I just, good thing I cranked him out and kept it pinned. All right, look dudes, they're fat in here though. Look, when we actually link up with a decent sized one, I got a feeling it's gonna have some weight on it. We literally might have to bust out the scale here if we get one with some decent length because I got a feeling it's gonna be fat for its size. Let's keep over in this area. I was sure that was gonna be a bite, man. It's just everything added up. Almost like every time I've come around a corner with the wall away from the sun, kind of shaded, and it's got a little bit of cover and overhanging stuff, I mean, that's where I've been getting my bites. And I just had a feeling, I mean, there's this tree over here. This looks like the spot, man. There was no doubt in my mind I was gonna get one fish, but I think I can pull two to three out of this spot here before I really have scared them all out or whatever. Get your butt up. <laughs> we found him. First fish on the boat for me. Look at that little chunk. This is too cool. Having the rod holder right here in the very front at an angle, you can just put your rod right in there, grab your fish off of the hook and be on your way. Let's get him back in the water. That was cool. First cast, actually. I just switched things up, tied on it. Just good old Texas rig, and this is the uh, Mondo Worm Watermelon Red Flake. There we go. There we go. Oh, this might be a good one. Oh, guys, this might be a good one. Oh! This is a good fish, guys! In the boat! In the boat! Ah! Ah! Oh god, stop! Stop, stop! No! He's hooked so good, I gotta use the pliers. Look at you guys, second fish on the boat for me, and this guy is a good one. We're gonna go ahead and get him on the scale, see what he might weigh in on. Really pretty bass out of here. I don't know, have the ones you've been catching been pretty? They've been like, healthy. They're They've super been healthy, fat. I mean, look how fat. Dang. The, my little guy that I, I caught before him, Dude, this guy jumped like crazy. Three and a half? 3.43. 3.43? Yeah. 3.43? <laughs> Alright guys, let's get him back in the water. The Sportsman 120 Autopilot. First impressions, I've been out at, I've been out on it for what? We've been out here maybe an hour. This thing is legit. I, um, I have to say I almost feel like I enjoy fishing off of this maybe as much, if not even more than the boat. It's Shh, crazy, Don't right? say that. Seriously. <laughs> it's crazy. It really is mind blowing. <laughs> like to know that you can get to like places that you normally can't go to in a boat, but still have the capabilities of the boat, if that makes sense. I'm absolutely loving it, but let's go ahead and get some more fish in the boat. I'll get used to it a little bit more and I'll give you my final first impressions at the end of the video. There we go. Hey. What's the 
Stay down. It's not a bad one. Get up here. Get up here. Next cast. Hit, you are on your way to some dinner. I know. So healthy. That's insane. Torrance is on with his like, how many is that for you? Three? But look what we got, guys. I think I might just be the happiest dude on Planet Kayak right now. I got not only the drop shot that they're hitting, but I got the bigger dragon drops, man. This is the thick. Explored other options now they've kind of decided they want to chill out for a minute. The bite went from 100 to zero real quick. I uh, threw the frog for a minute. I need to grab some more shaky heads if I'm going to throw that anymore because I have none left. And now I'm rocking the chatterbait. See what hits out here. Torrance switched it up to a deeper diver, then he started getting some grass, and now he's throwing a lipless so he can kind of rip through it. And then Devin, I think, is still on the uh, Mondo Worm 10 inch ribbon tail. Oh, that. Yeah, you put it in your line and wrap it around, and then you should be good to go. Uh, all right, so this paddle, you're supposed to put the line right here and then feed this down and maybe be able to get your bait free. Well, in this case, it's a little bit different because I'm pretty sure the fish got me wrapped around something here, but we'll see. Well, she really works. That's crazy. That little bait saving tool really works. <laughs> you got another one. Yeah, Torrance is raking them up. You're throwing a worm, right? I think my GoPro battery is dying, but I just missed another fish. And I was just talking about this place, man. Literally just like hundreds of thousands of dollars of <laughs> just abandoned or kind of like retired uh, construction equipment absolutely crazy this place is just out here i don't think it hardly ever gets fished and it's got a lot of untapped potential because of that i mean i could see there being some very big fish in here after the health that these bass are in that we're catching i'm sure if we up the profile on the baits we're throwing we could really get some hogs i've just been kind of rocking what i have on this boat for the night and going to devon she's got all the tackle if i had a uh if i had a jig i'd probably be throwing it but i'm enjoying this drop shot because anytime you can get a fish fight on this thing it is quite enjoyable but yeah i think to tear this place apart with uh the jig maybe some larger swim baits on the bottom and just keep at it with the shaky head i think could produce some pretty big fish now i've got something on i'm not sure what we got here but if it's like these other ones it's probably gonna come off it's definitely small definitely small may not even be a bass keep it down he's tiny but at least we got another fish on here Yep, you're, you are tiny, aren't you, bud? Yep, come here. Okay, that's fine. Let him get away, it's kind of the story of the night. Let me get another drag and drop, drag and drop. But the, what I did there was I let a little slack because I noticed I had reeled in too much. And so he was like right off the end of the rod tip and that's a good way to snap your rod as you try and get these fish out of here. This is a medium light, so you really just want to have extra line out, kind of raise that rod tip enough and grab them by the lip while they're down there in the water. Um, yeah. I've had a couple bites here. You guys missed one off camera because the GoPro was overheating. But uh, I went to save the clip after a pretty good fight. Got him close to the boat and lost him. So that's just been the story of the evening, man. Little guy. Come on over. <laughs> Another... Fishing the boat before sunset. Hashtag uh, sunset bug. Little fatty. Holy cow. See ya, bud. All right. Well, the sunlight is fading, y'all. We might just call it. It's going to take us a minute to load these up. Plus, we got big plans to fish a uh, private spot tomorrow. And with that being said, we would like to get some sleep because we plan on staying out there all day. All right, guys. So we got the old towns all loaded up. First time taking it out. Spent a couple hours on it. I have to say, this thing is an absolute beast. I can't wait to spend some more time on it, get to know a little bit more about how the motor works, the ins and outs. I know there's some tricks and tips, but overall today, I think it was a complete success. I caught fish on it. It makes fishing from a kayak 10 times more comfortable. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, it felt good to get back out and fished. It's been a little bit for me. So until the next time, guys, peace out. Slight turn of events, y'all. We backed a little too far down the uh, boat ramp. <laughs> the old V-dub's chilling again, but we're getting her hooked up. About to help Torrance out of here. You can see we tried a couple times and uh, didn't quite make it. Came up just short. <laughs> just short. Luckily, Torrance got a tow hook right on the front. We got the hitch. We're going to see how it all works out. Save!
saved. No way. Okay. Oh, we hey, made it out. Luckily, bad, we got bro. the straps to tie down the X. <laughs> Oh, well, that was eventful. Well, guys, we had planned on getting out of this place before sunset, and what had happened was we had a little bit of a mishap. Torrance, it doesn't look like super steep in that little shot we just showed you, but uh, Torrance was like trying to get up from where we was retrieved his kayak, and his wheels were just digging in deep and digging in deep. It's a front wheel drive, and so it was not going anywhere. So anyways, we got that taken care of. Then the sun started setting, and we're making our way out of the construction site. We pull up to the front gate, and it's locked. And we spend like 45 minutes on low fuel in the truck, kind of like almost freaking out. Just like, how are we going to leave this place because they had it gated in or us gated in. And uh, anyways, we just happened to get so lucky because another group of guys was out on a John boat fishing another one of the lakes on the construction site's property. And they knew somebody who worked for the business and they had a lockbox hidden and were able to open the gate for us and we got out of there. Uh, otherwise, I guess we would have just been there stuck all night. We literally got locked in. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, everything pretty much went wrong, but we had a ton of fun. I missed the biggest fish. It tends to happen. And maybe we'll have better luck on the next few videos. See you then. Peace.